69 degrees in downtown Sylacauga this morning. Hot today, so watch it out there and be careful with the heat index value is well over 100 degrees today. And uh, so check on your uh, loved ones. Uh, maybe you've got some older folks live around you. Make sure they're taken care of as far as and not get overheated, and your animals also. Hot today with a high near 99 degrees. That's a wrap for me on Daybreak Live. Thanks so much for joining us. Hope to see you again bright and early in the morning, 5.30, for news, sports, and weather. Don't forget the presidential debate tomorrow night. And today, of course, is World Drug Day. I'm Jim Adele. See you again tomorrow morning. Until then, God bless you. God bless America. Stay safe, everyone. Good morning, rise and shine. We're, are we really? There we are. Good morning. See, the camera wasn't up. Well, he's not supposed to be. Good morning and rise and shine. It's of an Odyssey Wednesday. We got Jeff on the floor. We got the guy in the booth. Who's in the booth today? Jason. Jason's in the booth. Very good. It's early morning. I got my coffee. We got Susan Chipman hi, and hi. Chef Dave in the house. Um, of an Odyssey Wednesday. Of an Odyssey Wednesday. We have, yes. we have a, a liver heart cake for us for It <laughs> <laughs> does look like a liver. We've already, we've already, we're prepping for the Blueberry Festival for next year. Yes, we've, we are. We've come up with the ready. Blueberry Toss. The blueberry we're prepping toss. for 4th of July today. That's yeah, the yeah, action. That's the That's action. The 4th of July. Oh, this is Absolutely. right. This is 4th of July. Are, That's right. Okay. Holiday driven today. So tell us what you're, what you're, what you're making for us today. Well, we've got some uh, beautiful smoked pork. And if you're always wondering, what, what do I do with my leftovers, or uh, what else can I do to jazz up the holiday season, we're going to make barbecue egg rolls today. Barbecue egg barbecue rolls? Barbecue egg rolls. We've got some fresh uh, potato salad with a little fresh dill in it. We've got pasta salad and barbecue egg rolls, and that's what's happening. That's what's going down today. I've never Excellent. heard of a barbecue egg roll. Well, me either, so we're going to try it today and see how it rolls. You know those, those the, the wraps you get at, at uh, what's that restaurant that does the, the lettuce wraps? You yeah, know what I'm talking about? Yeah, those are good, but that's not barbecue egg rolls. But you can't it's fry not, lettuce, so you can't thing. fry you know, lettuce. Sure you can. Uh, well, we, we could try. We fry everything we, we in this fry everything. We are going to fry can some. fry butter, you can <laughs> fry We're going to do a little, lettuce. we're going to make a little fresh slaw with this. We've got some barbecue sauce, our homemade dad's Sam's famous, or I'm sorry, Byron's famous barbecue sauce. There you go. Got a little mayo for our slaw action. We've got some fresh sea salt, the smoked pork, 13 hour labor of love with this guy. We, it, we smoked it with. Uh, and, and I still question that. Because Applewood. It's not that you're actually working for 13 it hours. It is work. You have to monitor the temperature of the smoker uh -huh. continuously. Uh -huh. So you have okay. a smoker. Oh, yes. So, so what is the best for, the, for home use? Because you're like Chef Dave. You have a huge restaurant. You probably have a big smoker. Well, <laughs> for home use, uh, I use a Weber bullet smoker. Okay. And it's. Uh, an 18 inch smoker it's it's about yay tall and uh, it's got a, a heat sink well that you can put either water or sand or I like to put uh, apple cider vinegar in it and what that does is it just distributes the heat and keeps it yes. stable and it's a set and forget it kind of smoker it's a charcoal smoker see yeah throw apple wood we, we uh, Cut down an apple tree last year, and, and uh, the shipments were kind enough to provide me with a lot of wood for it. Mm -hmm. So I've got smoked chips for life oh, for wow. a while. Yeah, and uh, so apple wood we smoked up yeah. about it. It was about a seven or eight pound butt. Smoked it for 13 hours. We put our our uh, homemade rub on it. I made the homemade barbecue sauce. So that's what we've got. So it's 
holiday season. We've got some extra pork. We're going to make uh, egg rolls with this, and we're going to do it barbecue style. So we're going to dice up some pickles, make a little slaw, put the barbecue, a little mayo in the slaw, fry them up, and uh, go from there. Yay. Th this sounds like you just invented it. Yeah, well, a couple of hours ago. but Okay. Uh, so this is going to be an original recipe. Yeah. I mean, there are all original yeah. recipes yeah. in the book, yeah. but this yeah. one, this one is Steve under the chapter of what do you do with everything you've got left over. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. ah, and nice. you know with me recipe is a tall order so it's kind of a... <laughs> that's why we have Susan. Yes. <laughs> exactly. She's got, she's got all those document. literary degrees that yes. she needs to write. <laughs> Admin thing. So we've got some <laughs> yeah. uh, canola oil in the pot here. We're trying to get it up to 350. And it's getting close. It's at about 300 right now. So that's not... Uh, Olive oil, that's... No, I, I would never fry, never want to fry with olive oil unless I'm just sauteing something. So uh, it's, it's got a lower flash point. So we want an oil that's not going to smoke before it ah. gets hot enough. So gotcha. okay. good canola oil, good vegetable oil. Peanut oil is fantastic if, you're, uh, if you can do that without uh, going into anaphylactic shock. Um, we've got some fresh cabbage here and we're going we're gonna to make... Uh, we're just, Gonna sliver this up. See, that just looks well done. All you're doing is just cutting it off. It looks like just shaving it. And you know what? You can put slaw. You can uh, cube up your uh, cabbage and put it in a food processor. It works great. Make some quick slaw that way. A little mayo, a little white vinegar, and uh, salt and pepper, and you're there. And you want to shred up some carrots and put it in there, go for it. So you're making it look really easy because you have a very sharp knife. Speaking of which, I have some knives that really need your attention. Uh, you know what, and I bet a lot of our viewers do too, mm -hmm. and if we can help you with that, just give us a call. We'll be happy to come out to the house, sharpen up your blades, and uh, get you back in business. Yes. Do you a have dull a, knife is a dangerous knife. Do you have a special knife sharpener? I have a, uh, I have a, a several knife sharpeners mm -hmm. and, and some other knife sharpening tools. So we slivered this cabbage. We're going to cross cut it here and get it a little finer for our egg roll. You know, sharpening knives is really just about patience. It's not something you can do quickly. You can hone them with a rod and keep them tight. But uh, if you're like most of us, you probably neglect your kitchen tools and they need some attention and we're happy to come on out and get that done for you. I have a sharpening stone, but it doesn't seem to be doing the job and that's probably because I'm not doing it correctly. You know, stones are great for a lot of things, uh, pocket knives for instance, but you know, it's, it's uh, when you're using a stone, it requires a lot of, uh, a lot more skill because you got to get the angle just right. If, if you don't have the angle right, you're probably damaging your blade mm. versus sharpening your blade. Excellent. What about the electric sharpener? I, I use one. I have a nice one, and it's uh, pretty effective. But again, it's, you, you've got to have your uh, technique right. For the electric sharpener? Yep, you absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> If you, if you go side to side on the electric or even with a stone or, or whatever you've got, what you're doing is you're, you're, what you want to do is go several times on one side and then several times on the other and then again and then again. And I, I start, I, I count to 10 and I go 10 on one side, 10 on the other, then I go 9 and 9, 8 and 8 until I get it down and then I put it on the honer and do the same thing. And what happens is, when you're sharpening a knife, you sharpen this side, and what it does is it puts a burr on this side. Mm -hmm. So you keep putting that burr on there, and then you come on the other side and you take that burr off. And you put the burr on the other side, and then you come back and you take that burr off. And you continue that process until you're ready to hone, and, then, and that's what gives you a, a nice edge. You can run it through once or twice and it's sharp for the first time, but it's, what's sharp is the burr. So as soon as the burr comes off, it's not sharp anymore, oh. if that makes sense. Yeah. So what happens is the metal, before you sharpen it, the blade is like this. 
right? So it's been damaged, it furs up like that, and then it, when you sharpen it, you curve it and you put a burr on it. You take that burr off and you put the other burr on it, and you keep doing that until you just have a good sharp blade. Excellent. And then you hone it. So right, you do the That's in a nutshell, or you can just call me. Yeah. Well, and we'll get it done for there you. There you go. Call us at Oven Odyssey and we'll come out and get all your tools nice and ready for the season. In the home, what is when is the season? What is it's the, right now, we're here. This is barbecue Summertime. season. Summertime, it's barbecue season. So we've got our uh, cabbage diced up fine. We've got our, our pork. I, I I chopped it a little bit. I'm going to put the cabbage in a bowl, put a little bit of mayonnaise in there. Didn't even look like it came off your finger. <laughs> Some of it did. <laughs> going to take our tongs and mix that up a little bit. Cabbage and mayonnaise. A little bit of salt, a little bit of fresh pepper. I don't want this too wet because we're going to put it in the egg roll wrapper and we're going to fry it. So it, it, we, we don't want it kind of extra runny inside when we fry it. Put the pork in. Is that about a half a pound of pork? Yeah, maybe. Maybe a little less. A little barbecue sauce. Whatever your favorite sauce is. You could do a nice white barbecue sauce. Those are nice. That. Mix that up. We're going to take some pickle chips. These are bread and butter chips. I like bread and butter. You can go dill. Are those the zesty bread and butters? They are uh, sweet bread and butters. Put a little dice on these guys. Whoops. Careful. Stay right there. <laughs> Don't run them. Knock away. our table over. Look at that. And put those guys in. So we've got all the components of our favorite barbecue sandwich. And a little more sauce. Give that a quick mix. That's a really nice barbecue sauce. That was just obsessive with going through the steps and not taking any shortcuts, and it and it just Absolutely. turns out beautiful. And it's this sauce is a great balance of uh, vinegar and sweetness, and it's got fresh onions in it, sauteed onions in it, and uh, dark brown sugar, and it's just lovely. It's really nice. It Did you it make that barbecue sauce? Yes, absolutely. Okay. okay. What and wow, how do you, how do you how do you do that? Well, we start with sautéed onions, and then we add uh, ketchup and a little mustard and some Worcestershire sauce and some uh, vinegar and dark, dark brown, brown sugar. sugar and yeah, vinegar. Really, a little lemon juice. Yeah, mm -hmm. huh. simmer it down real nice, and it's a great balance. So we like it. That will not be in the book. Really? So Why that, not? Yeah, no, that one is proprietary. proprietary. Yes. Ah, yes. Yes. Well, the book is yes. going to be yes. no. published. That's proprietary. It is. <laughs> that is. It is. I guess that's like everybody's deal is the sauce, right? Y yes. That's the whole thing. It's Absolutely. all about the sauce. Well, it's yeah. all about the sauce. You know, pe people are funny about their barbecue sauce like they are about their spaghetti sauce and, and the right flavors in there. And, and once you get set on, hooked on something, that's that's your, that's it. That's your Let flavor. me just say I will share almost everything with you, John. <laughs> but not that. <laughs> but not that. <laughs> okay, I will just have to invent my own somehow. Absolutely. Or, or, you, or you can purchase it from Oven Odyssey and your trouble. Oh, do you are sell over. your barbecue sauce? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, well, there you go. See, barbecue that would... sauce, uh, we're getting some beautiful tomatoes and tomatillos yes. coming in the garden, yes. so we'll have fresh salsa at the farmer's market Ooh. in a couple I'm of weeks. So I'm so excited about, about that. that. Well, that'll and, be great. Uh, yes. With that'll some fresh great. fried chips to go with it, so you don't yes, have to stop we'll at have the Wally World for Salsa Verde and tortillas. Salsa Roja and yes. Salsa Violetta and Violetta. Salsa Violetta. Orange. Violetta, you make the barbecue uh -huh. sauce. Okay. <laughs> we're going to take a break. We'll That's come back idea. and we're going to see where we are on our barbecue here on Oven Odyssey Wednesday Rise and Shine.
would say college isn't for single parents or people who work full time. I'm here to prove them wrong. I'm a first generation American, the father of Dion, and a non-traditional student at Gadsden State Community College. As a sergeant in the Army National Guard, I've watched soldiers with degrees progress faster in their careers. So today, I'm in school, involved in the Veterans Upper Bound program, and excited to see what's in store for my career. I truly am earning my wings at Gadsden State. Come out and check out the Alabama Tractor Difference. We can take care of all your needs of parts, sales, and service for RTVs, zero turns, and tractors and construction equipment. See us here in Lincoln at 620 Speedway Industrial Drive. Or come visit us here in Asheville at 275 6th Avenue or give us a call at 205-594-7000. Hey everybody, I'm Larry May. I've been in the entertainment business for over 25 years. I've written uh, for the local paper. I've interviewed a lot of touring artists and local artists here. And uh, what I figured out is how much talent we have here in Alabama. That's why we put a new show together for you called Entertainment Alabama. Come watch us for the hottest new acts and some of your favorites that are national touring artists. More than 2.5 million youths admitted to vaping according to data from the CDC. Teens are at a greater risk for nicotine addiction because their brains are still developing. Please talk to your children about vaping. Although we may see things differently, the message can still reach me. Hughes Paint and Body Works Towing and Recovery in Oxford is the area's leading auto body shop serving Anniston, Oxford, Talladega, and surrounding areas since 1996. They specialize in auto body repair and refinishing, paint correction, paintless dent repair, towing, and so much more. For all of your auto body needs, contact Hughes Paint and Body Works Towing and Recovery at 256-835-1170. Also online at HughesPaintAndBody.com. Lacey Clons with your TV 24 news update. Summer is officially here and it seems to be getting hotter every day with temperatures reaching nearly 100 degrees. The main source of relief from this heat is air conditioning, but Alabama Power is recommending that when it's 100 degrees outside, everyone should set their thermostats to 80 degrees. Apparently, there is something called the 20 degree rule that most of us are likely unaware of. Per WBRC, Anthony Cook with Alabama Power says that the rule is based on industry standards for the way most air conditioners are designed. He says your AC unit will typically lower the temperature in your home about 20 degrees from what the temperature is outside, meaning if it's 100 degrees outside, most homes will only get down to around 80 degrees. Cook also says that you can set your thermostat for a lower temperature, but that it might not help much and you'll end up spending more money in the long run. He says it will continue to run in order to try and reach the temperature of where you set it, but it really won't get it beyond that 20 degree mark, so you'll be wasting energy, which essentially means wasting money. For more tips, visit alabamapower.com. For more news stories like these, plus weather with a Justin Deal and sports, tune in tonight to the TV 24 News. For WEAC TV 24, I'm Lacey Clance. Welcome back to Oven Odyssey Wednesday on Rise and Shine. We have got barbecue action going over there with Chef Dave, and we've got some dessert action getting ready to go here with Susan our bakeologist. Yes. So you got an egg now. I have an egg. So we're going to use Wait, the is egg. Is this one of your eggs from the chickens? This is not. This is an egg from it's someone else's egg. chicken. It's a foreign, foreign egg. Foreign Why egg. are we using a foreign but, egg? Well, that's what I had. Okay. So we're going to use foreign egg to uh, use a little egg wash to paint our egg roll with to make it stick. So we're going to start with giving this a quick whip. An egg wash. To make the edges sticky so the egg roll will stay. Okay, I got you. Well, you can use water, but this is going to work a little better, better for that. So. Yeah. Now, are, are store bought eggs better for egg washes? Well, you know, no. for this, it's just kind of a. You, you, any egg will do. Any, any egg, egg in a storm. Do. 
So basically, you had a store-bought egg laying around, and you had to get rid of it. I did. <laughs> uh, you know, there's so much bacon going on with Shipman Ranch that uh, there haven't been a lot of extra eggs. You know, having the new rooster in with the girls has motivated them to lay more eggs, and I, I, that's that's fabulous. You know, we tried the um, we tried one rooster and. Dominic, or and, and he attacked me, and so he had to go. So we have a new rooster. I think Rocky seems much Rocky better suited for the Rocky the rooster is, is the rooster. pretty relaxed. Yes. Hmm. So we have our egg roll wrappers, right? And you notice I've got a, a damp paper towel over it, just to keep them from drying out while we're working with them. So, yeah, anytime you're doing egg roll wrappers, wonton wrappers, uh, phyllo, phyllo dough, you want to keep that cool and moist so it doesn't dry out, because it'll dry out really quickly, it and does. then it's just ruined. So. These are egg roll wrappers. They're about five by five. Lovely. Where do you get those? Uh, you can find them in, uh, typically you find them in the produce section. Okay. Where the uh, wonton wrappers are. Where the wonton are. wrappers are. So we've got our egg roll wrapper. We've got it uh, in a diamond formation from us. And we're going to put about two ounces of our coleslaw and barbecue pickle mix here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to roll this guy up like a cigar. So we're going to pull that corner over, pull it back, get it nice and tight, bring the corners in. Look at that. Ta-da! A little egg wash on the corners there, and then roll them up. Excellent. Excellent egg roll yes. right there. I'm very excited hmm. about that. You know, Princeton University last year came up with a edible glue for that purpose. There's a product called Moo Glue that you, it's a, a beef gelatin based product and you can use it to, uh, if you're doing like a beef roll or a pork roll mm -hmm. and you're stuffing it and you want it to adhere to itself, you can put the moo glue on there and uh, it'll uh, adhere. It, it'll adhere. That sounds yucky, it's moo glue. Moo glue. It's one of those things chefs don't talk about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But it, it'll, yeah. Let, it'll let you do some neat things with it. But it's edible. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a beef product. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. So, so again, you haven't done anything to the the barbecue yet. You've just mixed it all up. You didn't you didn't heat it or fry it yet. This is what's coming. Correct. Right. It's going to heat up in the fryer, so I won't I won't have to worry about that. Cause these are nice, pretty thin little egg rolls. So those are lovely. Roll, rolling That's an egg a, roll a nice, is um, is a rather intense operation. If you're in a big restaurant and you have to make a lot of egg rolls, you have to have an employee that just that's all they do. Is Absolutely. Make or you take them out of that keep frozen box. No. No, you never. Well, no, no not us, but. That's okay. pretty neat. So while Dave rolls and the um, oil cools down just a little bit, we are going to look at the. Your heart liver cake. Red, white, and blueberry <laughs> treats that we're going to make. And, and what this is actually is. Um, some scraps from red velvet cake that I prepared for a consumer and you know the cake's going to cook with the dome on it and I, I take a leveler which is um, a, a piece of wire that's uh, strung on this tool and, and, and you take that um, dome part off so that the cake stacks nicely and flat for frosting purposes and so so that's what this is and and we're going to take this and we're going to um, just cut it into some nice looking cubes and we're going to put it into the cups that I brought with homemade whipped cream which is super easy homemade whipped cream is not something to be afraid of except for the sticker shock when you make the purchase because it's gotten outrageously expensive but it's it is just delightful and delicious and and you can absolutely tell the difference between a homemade whipped cream and cool whip. yes 
Absolutely, yes. But I like Cool Whip. And, well, it's okay, and you can continue to like Cool Whip and, and eat it, and I'm perfectly all right with that, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't have to. And so we're going to just put some of these in the bottom of these little cups. And some of the cups are, are bigger than we want to eat this morning. And, and I've got the whipped cream in a um, piping bag with a little piping tip on it. So how do you make the whipped cream? You, I, I take a cup of heavy cream, heavy whipping cream, mm -hmm. and put it in a, a large bowl because it's, it you know, has the tendency to kind of be sloppy or messy, and add to that one cup, measure that, one cup of whipping cream. I put two uh, teaspoons of powdered sugar, confectioner sugar, mm -hmm. because it dissolves really well and it's going to mix in really well. And, um, and, and you take your mixer, your hand mixer, and mix for about three minutes until you get the stiffness of the peak that you're looking for. That is when you turn the mixer off and, and you lift it up out of the whipping cream if it's staying where you think you want it to be. I did a really stiff peak on these because they do better for squirting purposes if you have a really stiff peak, meaning that the uh, whipped cream was, was pretty stiff and tight. I feel like I, we've had a lot of stiff peak jokes on the show. I think so we have. I think my there. doctor warned me about some of that. Uh, you know, uh, you ain't right. Something that is <laughs> what your doctor said. You may or may not <laughs> know, yes. but whipping cream and heavy cream are the same thing. Okay. Uh, you know, you you see both names used in a lot of recipe, but it, it's the same thing. You know, half and half milk, whole milk, uh, skim milk. It's all about fat content. In, in the dairy products. And so. we don't need any fat jokes here either. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> well, but it is delicious and, and it's so easy to do and, and it comes by, uh, you can buy it in 16 ounces or 32 ounces depending yeah. upon how much you need yeah, and, and what your budget time. can stand. Yeah, and it, and it stays fresh for a good while too if you're careful about the, the date that you're selecting. Okay. So that's how we do this, and we will show you how we eat these in a few minutes. Dave, you ready? So we've got some egg rolls rolled up here. Our oil got a little hot while I was running my mouth, but I think we're good enough to give this a shot. So uh, you can see where the egg wash, I mean, it's, it's like, like the moo glue. It's, it's like food glue, and it just sticks that egg roll wrapper right onto itself, and it's good to go. So. And it won't unravel when you dip it in the... We're going to find out. Oh. <laughs> it's not supposed to. So supposed ideally to. our oil's at 350. And how much oil do you have in there? Uh, probably more than I need, but you want enough to... Cover the... Cover and maybe an inch higher. Okay, so they're, they're deep frying. A lot of times, you know, if you cook a lot, you don't have to throw the oil away every time you use it. You know, it, often you can recycle it and strain it off run it through a, a, a sieve or a, you know, a mesh strainer and it will uh, it'll last you a few times depending on what you're cooking in it. Would you, would you store your oil in the refrigerator? No, I leave it out. You just leave leave it, it on the stove and put a lid on it. Okay. It does not need to be refrigerated. Cover it up so the critters don't get in. Yeah, cover it up and then strain it. So we, these guys are frying up. They're going to start floating when they get close. We're going to let them get a nice golden brown color on them. Is that what you look for, the floating? Uh, typically the when you're frying food, and when it gets close, it starts to float. Okay. So we've got a little paper towel to drain the grease off here. Let these guys do their thing. And they're looking nice. That, that's how we cook lobster. You cook them until they float. They turn red and float. We should do that one day really soon. Have a lobster cook? We yes. have a lobster and seafood bisque. That's what we need to that's, do. That's oh, that would be so good. Delicious and beautiful. I'm down with that. Yeah. I like a yes. nice seafood bisque. Me too. Okay, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we, maybe we can sample some of this lovely stuff. But stay with us here on Rise and Shine Oven Odyssey Wednesday. Woohoo!
Parnell with Parnell Insurance Agency. We've been here in Oxford and Alabama, Tallapoosa, Georgia since 1990. With Auto Owners Insurance, we're able to give customers competitive pricing along with excellent coverages. Parnell Insurance can handle all of your personal, commercial, and life insurance needs. We have a very experienced staff, both personal and commercial. All together, we've got about 125 years experience. Come see what our insurance agency can do for you in Oxford, Alabama, and Tallapoosa, Georgia. Auto Owners Insurance. At Bentley Prosthetic and Medical Supply, we care about you. We offer custom prosthetics, orthotics, diabetic shoes, and durable medical supplies. We're located here in Alexandria, Alabama, where it's a country feel but professional care. Come see us today. Presumed Unlimited, we offer a no pressure experience, no hidden fees, and great service after the sale, making us one of the fastest growing RV dealers in the Southeast. With our second location in Oxford, we offer a great selection of over 220 campers from top brands, including Grand Design. Our mission is to help friends and family spend time together in the great outdoors. At Campers Unlimited, you aren't just a customer, you are family. Check out our inventory at campersunlimited.net or come see us at Gaston or Oxford. Hello, I'm Taylor Sloan with the City of Oxford with a word about one of our city's most precious resources, water. Clean water enriches our lives in so many ways, but we cannot afford to take it for granted. Remember, every time you pour something unnatural down the drain or in the environment, and every time you litter, our beautiful lakes and creeks suffer. Our city is beautiful. Let's all join together to keep it that way. Stop pollution where it starts and help protect our waters for life. I'm Lacey Klontz with your TV 24 News Update. Summer is officially here and it seems to be getting hotter every day with temperatures reaching nearly 100 degrees. The main source of relief from this heat is air conditioning, but Alabama Power is recommending that when it's 100 degrees outside, everyone should set their thermostats to 80 degrees. Apparently, there is something called the 20 degree rule that most of us are likely unaware of. Per WBRC, Anthony Cook with Alabama Power says that the rule is based on industry standards for the way most air conditioners are designed. He says your AC unit will typically lower the temperature in your home about 20 degrees from what the temperature is outside, meaning if it's 100 degrees outside, most homes will only get down to around 80 degrees. Cook also says that you can set your thermostat for a lower temperature, but that it might not help much and you'll end up spending more money in the long run. He says it will continue to run in order to try and reach the temperature of where you set it, but it really won't get it beyond that 20 degree mark, so you'll be wasting energy, which essentially means wasting money. For more tips, visit alabamapower.com. For more news stories like these, plus weather with the Justin Deal and sports, tune in tonight to the TV 24 News. For WEAC TV 24, I'm Lacey Clance. Welcome back to Rise and Shine of an Odyssey Wednesday. We got Chef Dave and Susan Shipman in the house. We have our traditional Alabama fried egg roll. <laughs> traditional Barbecue egg rolls, rolls. yes. Uh, Don't know that yes, that's a, a thing. It they, is a new, they, were it brought, is they were brought to Alabama in the early 1800s. Um, a new tradition. By, by an Irishman. I'm going to stop before <laughs> this gets <laughs> ugly. Before I say something, I can't yes, take back on live yes, TV. Those are beautiful. So, and, and that's the color we're looking for. It's nice yes. golden brown. Well, we kept moving them around, kept it even. Lovely. And I'm uh, going to let them, I'm, I've let them rest for just a moment. And now I'm going to cut them to display a little better because I think it'll it'll present better. And they're super hot. If we cut them in half, and they're super hot, so we're going to cut them on a bias. On a what? Sideways. Angle. A bias. Is that what you call that? Mm -hmm. Like that. Why would you not call that an angle? Because we like bias. <laughs> You know why we have use to check your internal a 25 bias. cent <laughs> word when you can use and, and a look how nice that egg wash. Yes. I, I mean that's held like it. perfect. It held it together really well. One piece of wrapper. Yep. There's they're all very tight. They're they're and that egg wash was nothing more than just you, just an egg. an egg. Just an egg and you whip it good. Whipped it and that's pretty interesting. Give those guys a cut. Nice. Huh. 
plate them up on our platter with our pasta salad and our potato salad. And we've got a nice little 4th of July Independence Day appetizer. Look at that. Wouldn't these That's be lovely. great on a platter with some sauce in the middle oh, and a little yeah. toothpicks oh, yeah. in there? Really right in my lap. In your <laughs> face, mm -hmm. yes. So the golden brown is what you're looking for when you when you put it in there. The golden brown is what you're looking for. Let's talk a little bit about our sides today. We've got the, I, I did these last night at, in the kitchen. The pasta salad has feta cheese, black olives, green onions, a uh, little basil, a little oregano, a little bit of thyme, olive oil, and a dash of red wine vinegar in it. And uh, fresh basil would be fantastic in that. I would want to cut that in ribbons and mix that through. And it's just a nice light side, a cold side for the holidays. The potato salad, boil the potatoes. Uh, when you think they're done, you probably cooked them too long. So stop ahead of time. Do you cut them up into squares, of cubes before I do, you bowl? Yeah, and and then what I do, I, I don't just use the cubes. I take a, a resting rack, a baking rack, and I put it on top of the mixing bowl, and I take those potatoes and I smash them through that rack. So I cut them in big chunks just so they cook fast. Mm -hmm. Then I smash them through the rack, which has about half inch squares in it. Right. And that does a great job. And you get a com kind of a combination of. A chunky potato yes. and some mushy yes. potatoes yes. in there. And so you wait until the water boils and then you put the cubed potatoes in. I, I just throw it's it all a, in there okay. and throw it on the stove. Okay. Uh, bring it up to a boil, give it about 15, 20 minutes, and they're, they're probably done. If you can stick a fork through them, they're done. Boiled right. eggs. So uh, we boiled uh, eggs for this and we, we chopped them up mayonnaise, a little bit of yellow mustard. It's got some fresh dill in it and uh, sweet pickle relish. Nice. And of course, salt and pepper. And that's about all there is to it. So uh, there's some easy side dishes. You know, it, it's, we're so quick to just run to the store and buy these things when you can make them and have a better product at home. And, Interesting. And yeah. uh, just take your time, have fun with it. You know, if you don't love it, that's all right. It'll be better next time. And it doesn't really take a whole lot of time either. People are freaked out about, you know, if it takes you 30 minutes in the kitchen, oh my goodness. But that's a, you know, it gives you such a delightful product and it's going to take me 30 minutes to drive to the store and get through the checkout line and get home. Absolutely. I think washing the, the dishes is the worst part for me. I, yes. I, I love the cooking yes. part. So here's, here's the question. When you wash your dishes, do you wash as you go or do you wait until you're all done? And no, I'm terrible. I, I wait until there's no room on the counter. And <clears throat> like every chef I've ever Yes, met. absolutely. Yep. That's 40 years of somebody else is going to do it. That's <laughs> correct. <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> they don't show you, up. You hire somebody. That's to do what that. we're missing. Yeah. In, in the, yeah. They're not yeah, around. Is the, the prep person and the, the dishwasher. Absolutely. We're so. hiring for that position, by the way. It pays nothing. Uh huh. All right. You <laughs> guys are ready to eat. Give it to the rooster. <laughs> that's it. Yes. Give it to the rooster. Okay. We're, we're coming over here it. now. We're going we're gonna to taste test our. Excellent. Traditional Alabama. Traditional first barbecued. time ever. <laughs> mm -hmm. Barbecue egg rolls. Egg rolls. Egg rolls. That, uh, it looks great. It looks like something you'd see in, in Alabama. On my plate. St. Louis. On your plate. Something I'd see on my plate. It's fried. Yeah. How bad can it be, right? How bad can it be? <laughs> this is heart healthy. Heart healthy uh, traditional Alabama barbecue egg roll. And isn't that pretty? Yeah, wouldn't that look nice? We do need a picture of that. Could somebody take a picture of that, John? Before, since I can't find right, my let's, phone. Let's get a picture. Hang on. When a fancy new phone here takes very good pictures. Let's see. We'll get the. Uh, get, okay, move your hand now. Oh. Uh, 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 let's see. We'll do it like that. Thank you. Here we go. Lovely. Lovely. All right. Lovely see indeed. How. All right. <clears throat> There's a good, All right. good picture. There you go. Okay. All right. We have let's, our. <clears throat> Have our utensils. Let's do it. Sorry, I did not bring my tongs over here. Oh, got to have tongs. I brought yeah. some of our tomatoes in also. We, we had these um, orange tomatoes, and I waited to see if they were actually going to turn red, and so no. That we, and did they? That they did not, no. and apparently this particular variety snuck in with the palette of other plants that we purchased, and so hello to you. We've also got a Cherokee purple here, and this is one of those purple bumblebees. That's a really 
um, super sauce, easy to grow and is, is looking very productive. And then the look, smaller red ones are sweet 100s. There's aroma in the mix here. And, and there's so, some sweet 100s in the pasta salad. Excellent. As well. Very good. You know, the fun part about this is I, is I just had a, a master chef personally plate my food. Easy. I mean, that's good. That, that's Get like having the, the artist, that's like having Michelangelo come in and, and, and I don't know. Oh, it's that's maybe a more like a house painter. Of an exaggeration. <laughs> yes. Hey, exactly. Rembrandt come in and, and uh -huh. paint your portrait personally. Yeah. 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 Bob the house painter. <laughs> over here. Uh. Oh my goodness. All right. Are we ready to taste this? Get in there. Is it is it okay, it's not too hot. Thank you. Good. So we've got our, our little bias cut. A lot. Nice. Which is good for dipping. Mm -hmm. A little easier it to looks manage real there. Wow. How'd that turn out? Wow. See, that's really pretty too. That little. Mm. This is amazing. Nice. I can see why this is a traditional. Oh. And you know, you're hanging out in the backyard, hanging out at the pool, you need a little finger food. This is a good way to start it off while they're waiting on some other stuff mm. to come off the grill. That's amazing. It's pretty too. And it, it's interesting, yeah. Mm. Interesting, he says. It is. It's really amazing. And the sauces. So, the barbecue sauce, which is proprietary, as we know, mm -hmm. the special oven odyssey, Chef Dave, master barbecue. What do you would call that? Barbecue sauce. We have to sauce? have a marketing name for that. It's my dad's recipe. It's a Byron's famous sauce. Famous Byron's sauce. famous sauce. Mm -hmm. Those, if you'd like some mm -hmm. Byron's famous sauce, contact. Our friends at Oven Odyssey. Give us a call or show up at the Farmer's Market. We'll hook you up. The Farmer's Market, they've got gallons of it. In Jacksonville. That's the Jacksonville. Every mm -hmm. Saturday from 7 a.m. until noon. Mm-hmm. Noon. Um, and well, trust me, this is this is excellent, excellent sauce. Fantastic. And these we can do these. Pick up a lot of the stuff that you mix in with them. That's nice. That, yeah. Right? Yeah, that's rotini. And, uh, you know, mm. different pastas have different shapes for a reason. If you're doing a lighter sauce, you want something that's got some shape to it to pick up that sauce. Doing a heavy sauce like an Alfredo or a marinara or meat sauce, uh, fettuccine's great, any, any of the long noodles, spaghetti, angel hair. Uh, but if you're doing a lighter sauce, something olive oil based or, or in, in that frame, you want to do something like this or bow tie pasta or something that's going to cling that give it some more surface, surface area, area mm -hmm. to cling to that yeah. cling there was a, a nice. guy I, I heard interviewed a couple of years ago that invented a new pasta a new pasta shape i mean he got an award for it it was a big it was a big news thing because apparently people don't create new pasta yeah, shapes every yeah, day it's only been a thousand years or so but this so guy this guy came up with a new shape that and, and he was just playing with it at oh, home like you said trying it? to get one that would cling to the sauce would cling to and yep. he designed it and he won an award and that's all I remember about so, that. So you don't remember actually what the shape is? I don't. It, it, <laughs> I was listening to it on radio so they didn't have a picture. <laughs> but they did talk about it. Mm -hmm. It was an interesting shape. I like this pasta salad for the holidays because so many of our dishes are very heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know you've got barbecue, mm -hmm. you've got potato salad, you've got devil to bake beans you know that's that's some heavy food so it's nice to have something lighter on the table that that folks can enjoy that's not going to weigh them and down. this just yes. tastes so it is it's light, nice and light it's, simple it's a nice flavor it's not overwhelming it's amazing as is the sauce the potato salad i really like the fresh dill in it i think it, it kicks it up a notch and gives it a little added a zing that Sometimes missing. I think sometimes yeah. we're a little too heavy with the mustard on potato salad, so we try to go a little lighter. Fantastic. Well, we're going to take another break. Yeah, when yeah. we get back, we're going to be still devouring our traditional egg roll barbecue. <laughs> Stay with us on Oven <laughs> Odyssey Wednesday. <laughs>
is warming up and spring is just around the corner at Miller Sand and Landscape Supply. I'm Craig Miller and we've got something for everyone. From bulk materials like sand, gravel and mulch to beautiful outdoor decor to make your outdoor living space the envy of the neighborhood. See our beautiful selection of mozzarella fountains, flowers to brighten your garden and an outdoor center loaded with beautiful decor. Whether you need a little or a lot, visit Miller Sand and Landscape Supply. Some say college isn't for single parents or people who work full time. I'm here to prove them wrong. I'm a first generation American, the father of Dion, and a non-traditional student at Gadsden State Community College. As a sergeant in the Army National Guard, I've watched soldiers with degrees progress faster in their careers. So today, I'm in school, involved in the Veterans Upper Bound program, and excited to see what's in store for my career. I truly am earning my wings at Gadsden State. You may not believe it, but it's true. The 2024 T1 Chevys are here. All 2324 Silverado light duties have 2.9% financing for 72 months. The hottest new 2014 T1 Chevy Blazer, 1.9% financing and no payments till April. And the number one selling family vehicle, the Equinox. 24 models, you got it. 1.9% financing and no payments till April. Team One Chevrolet, home of the best people, the best service, period. I'm Macy Klontz with your TV 24 News update. Summer is officially here and it seems to be getting hotter every day with temperatures reaching nearly 100 degrees. The main source of relief from this heat is air conditioning, but Alabama Power is recommending that when it's 100 degrees outside, everyone should set their thermostats to 80 degrees. Apparently, there is something called the 20 degree rule that most of us are likely unaware of. Per WBRC, Anthony Cook with Alabama Power says that the rule is based on industry standards for the way most air conditioners are designed. He says your AC unit will typically lower the temperature in your home about 20 degrees from what the temperature is outside, meaning if it's 100 degrees outside, most homes will only get down to around 80 degrees. Cook also says that you can set your thermostat for a lower temperature, but that it might not help much and you'll end up spending more money in the long run. He says it will continue to run in order to try and reach the temperature of where you set it, but it really won't get it beyond that 20 degree mark, so you'll be wasting energy, which essentially means wasting money. For more tips, visit alabamapower.com. For more news stories like these, plus weather with Justin Beal and sports, tune in tonight to the TV 24 News. For WEAC TV 24, I'm Lacey Clance. And we're back with the Clean Plate Club. I've had my <laughs> <laughs> traditional <laughs> Alabama barbecue egg roll. You've got to start bringing bigger plates. Yeah. I didn't need this is definitely a bigger plate. So if you're planning a wedding or an anniversary party or any kind of an event, but June was the month of weddings. I've been to a bunch of weddings. I played it's bagpipes at one. Yeah. I went as a guest at another. I guess I'm just, but my sister's getting married. Too many weddings. It's a, it's a thing. Do but, you know weddings. But these little egg roll thingies are perfect for that you know, wedding buffet where you're getting along, you got barbecue, but you got the barbecue, you gotta put it on a plate, and you gotta get the roll. This is genius. Perfect for your party, neat, no mess. Perfect Great for appetizer. Your party. party perfect. Nice. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely party perfect. The um, cabbage isn't overwhelming or undercooked or anything. That's, that's a good thing. Oh, nice. And paprika is the secret to the mm -hmm. potato salad. That's the line from that movie. <laughs> that, is the line. <laughs> oh, that is the line. That is the line. Paprika. We have <laughs> some papri peppers growing in the shipment spot by the highway. I'm excited hey, about peppers. all the peppers Pine and, too, pimento and, peppers and tomatoes and, and, and yes, things coming up. So. Cayenne, fiesta, and jalapenos of many different colors. Those are colors that many different varieties of peppers. Apparently. There are, oh, like tomatoes. Gosh, yeah. mm -hmm. I didn't know that We have holy molies and mucho nachos. And I thought it was something else. Altogether. Sweet bananas and other bananas. And really? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's do the dessert. Oh, well, yeah. Okay, well, let's do. I have spoons for the dessert. And, well, you have spoons. a spoon. I have a spoon. Good, good I deal. I can scoot those down. Look at that. Mm. Now, this. So, I don't have to catch the blueberries. She's been throwing yes, them at me since the, sh 
This is a red, First white, commercial and blue. It, it's, you can't it's really see it. It's a red, white, and blueberry. It's uh, red, got white, and blueberry. Nice kind of layers in it. That there it is. It's very it presents really yes. well. Yes. Yeah. See it that way. And it is blueberry season. It blueberry is blueberry season, season is coming to an end pretty soon. So. Is it coming to an end? Blueberries are that short a season? They are a short season, and I've still got some that aren't blue yet <laughs> uh, on the bush. So we've probably got another 10 days. Really? Mm -hmm. And they only have one short season. Yeah, Correct. and I, I've got, I think, a different variety because mm -hmm. they uh, blew up growing. a little later, so uh -huh. I'll get mm -hmm. a couple more weeks on mine. Mm. That is so all right, right there. So we can hang on some blueberries for a little while if the birds don't get them all. Now, are blueberries, a, uh, they grow in a bush, you just said that. Um, did, once they've blueberried, <laughs> And the bush is done. Is is that the end of the bush, or you have, you have to replant them, or they grow every no, year? No, they come back every year. Okay, I'm just gonna prune it up a little bit. But. Yeah, they, they get bigger and stronger, and and this is probably the most blueberries I've ever seen on our um, bushes in the in the little um, orchard there. Yes, you've had a lot this year. We um, were we covered them twice. You know, they bloomed early, and then we had a couple of late frosts, and so we were careful to cover them so that they wouldn't get frozen. We lost all the blue blueberries last year and hmm, so good. it's just been a bumper crop and I have these freeze really well. If you put them up in a container that's the size that's called for and whatever kind of recipes you're going to use them in, then they're they're right there ready for you and in most of the recipes you don't have to thaw the blueberries, you just dump the frozen blueberries in whatever it is you're cooking and and it turns out very well. So we have quite a few little um, half pints, I guess, of uh, cup size blueberries in the freezer now. Really? This yes. is great. It is okay, nice. isn't it? It's a, that's a they red velvet great. cake with, I didn't really know how that kind of chocolatey thing was going to go with the blueberries, but I guess when you put homemade whipped cream on it, anything is and, and amazing. Everything tastes Absolutely. better with homemade whipped cream. Absolutely, yes. And frozen blueberries are Lovely. a great snack, by the way. They, they are, yes. Pull them out of the freezer. And mm -hmm. Healthy snack. So, so we'll hopefully still have some blueberries this Saturday for the farmer's market. We should. Mm -hmm. the farmer's market in Jacksonville. Loads Saturday. of fresh tomatoes. And we will have some actual ripe tomatoes for the Jacksonville farmer's market, which is, oh, and, and, the, that, and the green beans. You know, you say ripe, that's two days away. Uh, that's uh, probably a day away. Yeah, it's tomorrow the next day. Yep, it's going to be, be perfect. Red, red, red. Mm -hmm. Really yeah. enjoyed my cherry tomatoes. Mm -hmm. I hate to call them cherry tomatoes because they're so much bigger. They they are kind of bigger, aren't they're they? They're awesome. They're like an almost a plum tomato. I think but they, they will they too. will get redder as they. They will absolutely yeah. Yeah, it's and we have um, quite an assortment of different types of uh, tomatoes yeah. in the garden, along with the peppers and and onions. I planted onions this year. I haven't done that before. Really? Yes. And, and we have lots basil of herbs and oregano and, some corn and coming up. dill and corn and cantaloupes. Cantaloupes and the Blue Lake pole beans are coming on strong and they've crazy. just started. Yes, so that's going to be a thing. That's amazing. I'm growing faster than she can pick them. Mm -hmm. Wow, really? The okra's really? coming along too, so. Yes. The Shipman Farm is very exciting. It's trucking right along. My goodness. That's yes. Cool. You're going to need people to come out and pick things. No, we're good. Thank you. You are good? Yes. You got enough pickers? It's it's funny that <laughs> when you invite people to come and pick your garden that they fail to pick any weeds out of the garden. They just come and take the vegetables and, and like take a horde of locusts and, take them. and yes. take them. Yes. And so, hmm. so I'm not apt to <laughs> invite a whole lot of people in. <laughs> Her social network is kind of small. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's invite the locusts over. <laughs> invite the locusts. Yeah, these bad boys get really big, these um, Cherokee purples, and we have some uh, Cherokee chocolates planted as well. We'll those see what those fun. look like. We're going to make some fun uh, Cherokee chocolates. salsa with yes. that action. Yeah. Yes. Why are they called Because I assume because they're going to be a brown tomato. I saw a thing on, on the internet, which means you can't probably believe it, but mm. it was this rooster that was, or this chicken that was pure jet black mm -hmm. from head to toe and laid black eggs. Hmm. And apparently that was a the, hen then. Yeah, it was a hen. Yeah, so laid black eggs, and the meat in this in this hen was was black as hmm. well. 
Hmm. Everything was black. I've seen that. Have you seen yeah, that? I, I don't know. know if that's real or not. I've never seen anything How like that How could that be attractive? Well, well, it's on the internet. It must be true. Yeah. Well, it's it was jet black. It's like, you know, you can get Lamborghinis and jet black. It looked very... <laughs> Lamborghinis, very chickens, tech. roosters that lay yeah. eggs. Uh, but they were also very, very expensive. These are like <laughs> primo hens. You know, designer hen. I'll have to designer. ask my friend Chris about that. <laughs> yeah. See what he thinks I can about just, that. I can just see it in somebody's marble backyard and having mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. black hens, jet black hens walking around. It would right. very, designer very high tech. Mm -hmm. very, Bill yeah. Gates probably has those. I'm oh sure. my goodness, that I'm is. I'm sure he has a like a like a marble chessboard. John, in his I worry about you some days. <laughs> <laughs> And just some days. <laughs> Overexposure to the internet. <laughs> well, you know, you, you just can't, you can't believe anything anymore. It, it, it's, <laughs> I, it, it, trust just, but verify. Well, trust but verify. There's so many AI images now, hmm. that, that and, and they're very good, and the only ones that are obvious fakes are like the ones where they've got, you know, pictures of the Egyptian slaves building the pyramid. You're like, yeah, I know that one's fake. Right? <laughs> okay, but, uh, but then you see some that, that are like from World War II, and, and you're like, wait a minute, I've seen a lot of World War II pictures, and I've never seen this it's one. It's getting hard mm -hmm. to. And so it's really getting hard to know what's hard real. Hard to know what's real and what's not real. But I'll tell you this what is, is real. This is real. This is real. And what else is real is on Jacksonville Farms Market this Saturday, we're taking pre orders for the holiday week. Uh, we can do. Uh, butts and sides. Smoke Boston butt. Butts and sides. Two pans mm -hmm. of sides, or do it a la carte, pick what you want. We got sauce to go with it, and we would love to take that off your plate. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you would love and to put that. ours on yours. Yes. You, you would love to have it off your plate as well. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so come show to the up, farmer's sign market. up, or give us a call, or hit us up on uh, mm -hmm. Facebook, and we'll. we'll Oven Odyssey, Oven Odyssey, 938899. Four two. Four two. We'll get two, you fixed two. up. And, get uh, up before it's too late. Yes. Come to the farmer's market. They've got all kinds of cool stuff there, including Dad Byron's. Byron's famous barbecue sauce. Byron's famous yes. barbecue sauce, yes. which is absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. And so uh, you need to get some of that. Order some butts. Get your, the, get your butt smoked here. Get yes. Absolutely. Your butt, yes. Are you going to smoke them right there at the farmer's market? No, I will, but I will <laughs> rub it for you before you I smoke it. <laughs> like a and good so cigar. We will it just also never stop. It just <laughs> never stops. <laughs> baked items and um, some lovely parfaits that won't be these identical parfaits, but we'll have something akin to those with the homemade Akin, whipped yes. cream. Yes, and hopefully some fresh fruit. Um, not tomatoes. I don't think tomatoes would make a very good parfait. Oh, but probably who knows? But we'll have tomatoes. Yeah, we so will have tomatoes. Just not tomatoes. tomatoes. All kinds yeah. of vegetables, not all tomato kinds of parfaits. stuff. So don't, yeah. uh, you know, Fourth of July is coming up. You want to be able to socialize with your family mm -hmm. and perhaps absolutely um, plan know, ahead. Yes. Refresh yourself with some adult beverages. But let, you, let me spend 13 hours on that smoker for correct. you because yes. it's hard work. Relax <laughs> and uh, enjoy work. yourself and have Chef Dave do all the heavy lifting so that you can impress your friends. Yes. And. Uh, with your culinary you can even, skills. You can even you can say claim that it as your own. the Byron sauce is yours and they'll be really mm -hmm. impressed. And I won't yep. tell. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and you'll ask, they'll ask, how did you make this? And you go, ah, it's a secret. Secret. Yes. 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 An ancient and Chinese secret. Ancient proprietary. Ancient Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I crossed the line. <laughs> it's too late. Okay, yeah, yeah. There's no pulling back now, guys. No. But you've got to take advantage of this because holidays are for being around uh, being around family. Absolutely. And, and why not let, let Oven Odyssey take care of everything for you? Yes. And don't forget the farmer's market every Saturday during the season here from 7 a.m. until noon. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of good stuff there, including yeah. Oven Odyssey. 7 yeah. until 11 for the Aniston Farmer's Market. And um, Are you at the Aniston Farmer's Market? We are not yet, no. Uh, we're already spread pretty thin, so yeah. we, but, but we may be there. And you know, Gadsden does a farmer's market on Fridays, and so oh. you can just make the rounds and, and see pick up what you are looking for, I would think, by now, uh, from all the many different vendors. So, Absolutely. not a bad way to spend it on a Saturday morning. Yes, spend your Saturday. Yeah, morning. don't sleep late. No, don't do that. Get up early, Get go, up to early. go to the farmer's market, go home, markets. chow down. Yes. Uh, plan you your parties, uh, you know, fall's coming, there's all kinds of festive mm -hmm. things, and uh, 
Chef Dave will be happy to. And, and the book will be coming out in the fall. In the fall, we yes. Hope. And uh, we'll have lots of recipes for you. But not the barbecue sauce. Not the barbecue not sauce. That. We will not have the barbecue sauce recipe. No. That you just have to buy. That's I'll do it. anything, but not that. <laughs> <laughs> Not that. <laughs> okay, meatloaf. That was I'll do anything for love. All right. Well, we appreciate you. Uh, we appreciate you being with us today on Oven Odyssey Wednesday, and we look forward to seeing you.